Well, good morning. Uh, hopefully it's a good morning for you. Uh, glad to see you here this morning at CNC. This is Pastor Jan just coming to you from the living room and uh, looking forward to the day that we can all be together and uh, get together upstairs and to hang out and uh, maybe hang out in parking lots and hang out around meals and lots of other places. So I'm just coming to you here on the 19th of April and I got a few things just wanted to, uh, to uh, touch base with you and say hi to you this morning. I see a few of you are checking in there and uh, um, I'm trying to work out a deal with Shelly so she can kind of let me see because you're too far away from my phone for me to, to read and to see. Even with my glasses on, I can't see that far. Uh, hi Alyssa, hi David Rains, hi Nikki Phillips, uh, hi Trisha French, Austin Trish say hello, hello. So. Uh, uh, I wish there was a way I could do this a little bit better so I could see what you guys are saying in real time so I kind of know who's out there. and It makes me feel more comfortable. So I get really nervous. Nobody thinks I do, but I really do. So um, a couple of things just wanted to say other than welcome is um, thank you so much for, uh, for your guys' continued support uh, of the ministries of the church and the finances and, and those sort of things. The pig is out front. <laughs> I had a couple of you stop by yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't get the pig out yesterday. He's not out all the time, but he usually is inside. And so that was one of the things I wanted to, to, to uh, let you know and to say is that um, I'm going to try to just keep like one of the front doors open at the church, like all through the week, like during the daytime hours. So from, you know, eight, nine o'clock, probably like nine o'clock till, you know, five or six in the evening, the front door of the church will be open. So, uh, hey, hi, Greg Sell. Hi, Donna. Hi, Ducky. Um, uh, the door will be open so you can go do two things um, right in the hallway by the office there's a drop slot there as well that if you want to drop ties or notes or uh, prayer requests that you need to get in hi Keila um, thank you Shelly hi Shelly <laughs> so uh, um, you can put your in there or the pig will be right inside the door so you can put in the pig and I thought it'd be kind of cool for some of you who who are just getting completely stir crazy and you want to keep social distancing that you'll be able to sort of uh, walk in and just kind of see what's going on occasionally don barnes or uh, ken senior might be in there and there's plenty of room to social distance and uh just to stop and say good morning scott uh to stop in and say hi to you guys um to them and to see what's going on uh, almost all the painting is done um hi hi uh will mj and anita um and it'll be a chance for those doors to be open so you can just sneak in and kind of see what is going on and where we're progressing um hopefully maybe this week uh, the lord willing and the creek don't rise uh, we may uh get some of the more major final parts of the process done i'm hoping so we'll see where we're at on that and see what we get done on that so i wanted to let you know about that um just taking care of business on that end of things Otherwise, hope everything is going good for you. Um, hi, Bonnie Forney. Hi, Sue Milhone. Um, good to see you guys in here as well. Isn't it kind of cool that we can be together? You know, I know this whole thing has just been a downer in terms of uh, the physical separation, but I'm so grateful that the Lord has provided us so many ways and so many means of still staying together, still staying in touch. And uh, I spent the day yesterday doing district zoom meetings for uh, ordination interviews and uh, you know we have five candidates for ordination this year and they don't know how they're going to ordain them because that's usually a, a gathering thing and that's a usually get together thing and but it was it was still it's still awesome to me how we can god has provided us some means and a ways to get together and still be in touch and still stay in contact with each other all right um uh hi evie hi chris hi wayne hi Fay and dave uh, it's good to see all of you as well um, let me tell you it's something that Shelly uh, did this week. It was an idea that Shelly had and her and I worked together. We wanted to make prayer a more integral part of who we are as, as, as a family, who we are as the people of God. Um, hi, Tim. And uh, so one of the things, and tell the kids I said, hi, and Kate, how are you doing? Um, so wanted to get together um, an idea. And so what we did was we put a post for prayer on the church's Facebook page. We're trying to figure Kind of how to do this and we want to maybe add it to the uh the church actually has a website some of you may or may not know it's cncfamily.net cncfamily.net cncfamily um and we want to try to add a page there but one of the problems the challenges with prayer requests is 
you get all these inundated prayer requests and you can't kind of keep them current and fresh. So what Shelly and I kind of concluded that what we would do is we would put a post for prayer on the church's Facebook page. And what we want you to do is in the comment section, um, what we want you to do is put your prayer request. Hey Ken, hey Donna, um, hey Tammy and, and the Everson family. Um, so what we'd like for you to do is to put in the comment section your prayer request. If you want to share a request um, or you see other requests that you want to share on your page, what we would like you to do is, is uh, hi Gary, hey Mitch, hey Tina, how you guys doing? Hey Caleb, trust that you're watching too. Um, uh, what we'd like you to do is to share the comments, which is the prayer request, but what we'd like you to do is to keep those comments on that page and then we're going to like take that down re or refresh it every Wednesday and every Sunday. Hey Daryl, I was that's my buddy Daryl McLaren who's who's out on the west coast there. Hi Daryl, he's I've been talking to him this morning before prayer and he's got up at 4 a.m. to pray for uh, pray for us and our church family and our pastors and and uh, I'd encourage you to pray more for my wife because she probably needs more prayer because she has to put up with me. So thank you, Daryl, for that. All right. Uh, good morning. And Daryl says good morning to all of you. Um, so what we'd like you to do is on the comment section of that post, we want you to put your prayer request. And then every Sunday and every Wednesday, we're going to basically delete that post and repost it so, there's, so that all those existing prayer requests are gone. We want you then to repost updated versions of those prayer requests so that we can not just put a list of 500 miles long of prayer requests but at least twice a week we're refreshing that with updates and encouragements you can put your praises on there uh, we want to hear how god's been answering those prayers and those sort of things and so we thought that would be uh, just a way to connect and communicate those to each other so good morning mike how you doing um looking forward to seeing that bench you got from mcdonald's so uh I feel like I'm really ADD, but I think you guys are used to me being that way. So if I keep like interrupting and stuff, then you know it's just me being me. So anyway, so on those prayer requests on the church's Facebook page, um, and uh, you can share those comments, but each Wednesday and each Sunday, those comments will all be gone, and we'll put fresh ones up there for you to be able to put um, put on the, on the page in the comment section, and make sure you update when something changes or so we know how God has been working in there. Hi Taylor, hi Fred, good morning, Joanne, good morning Vinny, Coco. Um, so we just want to keep doing that as well so we can keep those refreshed. Speaking of prayer, and I really, before I uh, bring you the message this morning, wanted to, to take some time to talk about this because I really wanted us to spend some time um, thinking about prayer and thinking about who needs prayer. So I have this, this list and I was uh, work, running down through this this morning and this is a partial list. So if your request isn't on here, then you know that you can put it in the comments right now if you have prayer requests. Uh, so, so everybody else who's watching right now can see those and be praying for those. Um, uh, and if you, uh, if you want, you can put those on the Facebook page on the, the prayer uh, list as well. Morning, Ashley Sell. Um, so make sure that you do that. But this list... It's just some of the ones that have gone out on the prayer chain and one of the ones, some of the ones that Shelly and I were thinking of. So I'm going to give you this list. It's pretty extensive. And if I didn't mention your family or don't mention your request, um, forgive me. Um, but I want us to try to keep these requests in front of us so that we can just not generally pray, that we can pray specifically. And you know, as Jesus said that my father's house, when we went to the temple, he was ticked off because he said, my father's house will be called a house of prayer. And he was quoting the scriptures. And uh, so we want to be a people of prayer. And every house represented here, for everyone you watching, we want your house because that is the Lord's house. This is the Lord's house. We want us to be a people of prayer. Some of the things that I came up with and Shelly came up with was Beth Engel's brother, um, Keith Everson's daughter, uh, dealing with, uh, with cancer. And he's and pray for Keith and Tammy and the family. And, and uh, you know, I know Keith's kind of out of work right now and he's having to take his daughter to get her treatments. And it's just, it's a lot of work. Vance Sharp continue to, to pray for him. They're looking to move him to a rehab facility. He's improving, and you keep seeing those requests that Jeannie puts out. Sue Milhone, and with she's her numbers have been pretty good, but still dealing with heart flutter. My buddy Nick McDade, who had open heart surgery not too long ago, and I um, I got to check with his mom and see. Hopefully he's he's back home. I know they were hoping to get him back home, but he's got a lot of recovery. And uh, I was thinking of um, MJ and Jimmy and their family, and and I remember. Um, uh, our senior adults, some of the people I was thinking there was Rich and Dolores, um, 
Hi, Linda Kalina. Hi, Dave Townsend. Some of our senior adults, Rich and Dolores Hellman, Virgil Blosser, Franklin uh, Pearson, Bruce and Linda Kalina, Danny and Crystal Hellman, Bev um, Lunger, Andy Kidd, Shelley's mom and dad, Donna Bell, Vivian Sell, Ken Sr., uh, Bonnie uh, Forney, and Linda Rosfeld, and Hugo, and Larry McFall, and Mo and Meg, and Dave and Faye, and Shirley Graham, and Shirley Snyder, and Carolyn Holsinger, and Don and Ruth, hi Don and Ruth out in, in uh, Arizona, Paul and Hilda Chaplow, and you, some of you would know who they are, but they've gone through some very difficult uh, physical times, and Ruth Patterson, who's still on lockdown uh, because she's over um, in, the, in the, which was Parkside, um, Morning Cherry, um, and Jack and Keela Knight, Richard and Mary Lou, um, the USS Theodore Roosevelt in Guam, that's actually, that boat is actually stationed uh, at the, uh, the base where Gary and Melinda Holsop, all of high Gary and Melinda, um, they, it is stationed um, over High Lily, um, that's stationed in Guam where they're at, and there's over 600 soldiers in quarantine there, so be praying for them and praying for that. Uh, Rich Morney's daughter, we need to keep praying for her. I was thinking of uh, some of those who work in the prison, Jane Barnes and uh, Caitlin Miles, Will Johnston, Jeff Fullerton, some of the frontline people, uh, Shelley Hopkins, Dave Levins, uh, Rob Keister, some other ones. I was thinking about um, our college students. Uh, I know there's probably some other ones, but Destiny French, you know, this is her senior year, her big investment of her time and talent and energy, and, and she's kind of being robbed of some of the pomp and pageantry of that, and it's still a great accomplishment, but that's a hard thing. And I was thinking of our seniors in high school, like uh, Mackenzie Brooks and, and Jared Kalina and Tanner Hoffer and uh, Kristen Mills, um, and Hunter Rosfeld and Todd Hood. I was thinking of marriages and thinking of families and, and there's just on and on and on. And that's just a partial list of what we've listed. And these are all, this is family to us. These are people who need us to be lifting them to the Lord, lifting them in prayer. So uh, I want us to be doing that. So on that, on that Facebook post, on the church's Facebook page where it says prayer, keep listing those comments, uh, those prayer requests. And then every Sunday, we're going to refresh that list so you can put new comments, repost the, the status of what that request is there every Sunday and every Wednesday. And let's just truly take this in our times of prayer, personal prayer, maybe a family. You gather together as a family and gather together to pray and, and, uh, and um, just take those time, time to prayer. Hi, Emily. Hope Casey's watching too. Hi, Casey. Hi, girls. Um, Emma Rose and Violet. Um, so take that time to just gather together as a family and just spend time in prayer and let's truly, truly lift each other up. And, and I love to do it and I encourage you to keep doing it as well. If you are out, if you're an essential employee or if you get a chance to be out on the street or God gives you an opportunity to talk to somebody, don't tell them you're going to pray for them. Just go ahead and pray for them. Pray for them right there, right now. And, uh, let's just, let's just make this a focus as we keep moving forward. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's some hope. Um, we're hoping like in May that some things will be changing and we can find some ways to be more gathered than just online. And uh, I think this will continue to be a part of who we are um, because it's, it just gives us a chance to reach a lot of people in a lot of different places. And, and I love that. You know, I love Daryl being able to be with us and, and, uh, and Don and Ruth out in Arizona. And I love, you know, so many of you who are too far to drive in here, maybe on a, a weekly basis, but we get to share and be together. And I love that. I love that. Um, Jim and Dixie, hey, Jim and Dixie, Coconut. Yes, pray for the Coconut family as well. And uh, just say, uh, hey guys, love and hugs and kisses to all of you as well. All right, and uh, quit lying, I don't look that good. So, all right, um, I would like us to take just a moment. I would like to take some time and I would like to pray um, just to, uh, to get started and I'd like to get into to the message. And, and I, I, I promised myself I would try to keep this short today, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, uh, we'll see how the Lord leads, but let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start um, with a word of prayer at least, and, and just be praying for each other this morning. Um, all right, good morning, Caleb. Let's pray. Father, I just love you this day. Give you the thanks and the praise for all my family who's gathered here with me. I thank you, Lord, that that though uh, physically we may be separated, that in spirit this morning we are truly one people with one God, living in one faith and one hope and one baptism and one Lord God who is in all, over all, and through all. Thank you that we are one and that from the many you've created the one, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, and that Lord, you are the head. And we just give you thanks for that. 
I thank you that in every life that is connected to this time of sharing this morning, Lord, you are actively working, engaged with their lives, meeting the needs they have. You know the needs. Nothing in their life that they're facing or dealing with is a surprise to you. This, this crisis is not a surprise to you. This pandemic has not caught you off guard. Lord, you are God who is in all over all, and you're in charge, and you are guiding and working all of our circumstances together, as you promised through Romans 8, 28, working them together for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Lord, we lift up the many names that are represented on our list already and the many other names that we didn't even get to today and the many other names, Lord, who are, who are maybe texting and thinking this morning about their own needs. And, and may we just come together in a powerful way in this, in this time of, 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 of crisis, yet this time of, of stopping, hitting the pause button. And, and you know, how many times have we said, you're, we've repeated your word that says, be still and know that I'm God. Lord, maybe we haven't done that as we should, but now here we find ourselves being still in many ways, calmer and slower than we've ever been before. And, and how I've loved some of these opportunities to, to play games or to hang out on the couch with my whole family around me or to get in the car with Shelly and drive by and, and just talk to one another to, from, uh, from driveways, Lord, it's been a long time since life has slowed down enough for us to, to really begin to engage each other at a personal level. And Lord, I'm, I just pray for those who are sick and suffering from this pandemic, but I thank you out of the midst of all the, the harm, you are still able to bring good. You're still able to draw some good things into our lives through the midst of this chaos and this crisis. And I give you thanks and I give you praise for that. So, Lord, I pray that in our time of sharing today that you would just draw us closer to you, closer to one another. Help us to, uh, to be a people of prayer and a people of love and compassion that truly look into and look after one another. May you make us mindful of each other's needs. May you keep us safe. And may you help, Lord, our leaders and those who are, who are dealing with this uh, crisis from the, from the top level, from the federal level, to the local, to the state level, the local level. Lord, we just pray that you would be the one guiding their thoughts and their decisions, their policies, and work all these things, Lord, good, for the good, not only for the good of those who love you, but for the good of all humanity, Lord, in order that those who are still looking for the Savior who has come, may they still come this morning and find that Savior in you. We love you this day. We give you the thanks and the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Um, uh, Joanne, I catch up here. Jane Barnes, hello. Joanne Kirshner, Emily, Abby uh, is watching with her. So, oh, Abby's with Emily. Hi, Abby. We prayed, Abby. You be praying there too. So don't be slacking just because you're not here. All right. You got to pray. All right. Well, hey, you know, this morning, I, before I go into the message, and we're going to get back into, um, and hi, Mo. Good to see you too, Mo. Um, I want to get back into the book of Luke. Luke chapter 7. So if you want to turn there or get there on your device, Luke chapter 7. We're going to be picking that up at verse 11. But I wanted to tell you something this morning. I want to tell you this. Happy Easter. Um, you may or may not know that this is the Orthodox Church, the Sunday. They have a different calendar. So today is the day that our friends in the Orthodox Church are celebrating Easter. So that's kind of cool to me. Um, Easter isn't over. You know, we're still celebrating Easter. And today, uh, for those who are uh, of the Orthodox uh, Church, they're celebrating it in some, I'm sure, creative ways. And so, hey, good news. Easter's still still going on. So you, you can still eat Reese's uh, Easter eggs. That's And if you want to share them with me, I'm still trying to kind of follow my fast, but my fast is over, so I do now accept Snickers, Diet Mountain Dew, and uh, anything that's Reese's or chocolate. So happy Easter. All right, what has Easter meant to us? Well, I don't know what it's meant to you, but it's, uh, it still was good for us. You know, uh, our family got together and uh, Shelly cooked up a storm. Um, I'm just finishing up the leftovers. I have just a little bit of corn souffle left and uh, uh, we had to freeze some of the beef, but we ate the, uh, the chicken Parisian stuff. Like last Sunday, we were just feasting, feasting like kings and queens and uh, it was awesome. And Easter has meant for me this year, probably more than ever before, an appreciation for the opportunity to be a part of such a larger family uh, than just the family that uh, gathers in my house and uh, and the uh, just I've really loved Holy Week this year and and uh, we haven't had the cantatas and we haven't had you know all the stuff going on where I'm just you know going 100 miles an hour and Shelly's going 100 miles an hour we're getting ready for the big crowd and for all those things and I've just sort of loved the pace at which we've been able to take 
Holy Week and Easter this year and a more appreciation for what the season really means and, and really more of an appreciation for just gathering as the body of Christ. Morning, Cody. Thanks for all you do, bud. Miss you here. So, um, so happy Easter to our Orthodox friends. And what is Easter meant to you? Well, I don't know, but we're going to get back into the book of Luke, chapter 7, 11 through 17. And I want to read it for you, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. And it says this. Soon afterwards, uh, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. I want to stop there just, just for a second. Think of this scene. Uh, here Jesus is. He's been healing people. He's been, the, the crowds have been following him everywhere. He has been uh, giving sight to the blind and, and hearing to the deaf and, and, and uh, healing the lame and, and doing all these things. And there's this crowd that's undoubtedly just in the thousands of thousands of people. And here Jesus is walking and this is the only time this town is mentioned and it's just not too far from Capernaum, maybe eight miles. And, and it would have, everything would have been traveled by you know, walking, and, and uh, so this crowd was walking along, and just think of the chaos that, and they, they approached this town, into the town gate, and here's this, this mass of people wailing and mourning and weeping for the loss of this, of this young man, who is the only son of this mother, and his mother is a widow, so she has now no husband to care for her needs, and in that culture and in that day, if you were a widow, and especially if you were a widow without a son, your life was almost um, sorry, um, your life was, you had no means, no way of, there was no uh, welfare, there was no, uh, uh, there was no real way for you to survive or to, to make a living or to keep yourself fed and, and, and there was no means of income. And yet all of this crowd and all this chaos and all of these people that are with Jesus, Jesus sees this mother. He sees this widow and the scripture says, um, and if you're reading the King James, it probably says, and he had compassion. He, he saw her, and it says, I love the way it says, his heart went out to her. His heart went out to her. And here in all this crowd, Jesus sees the sorrow and the need of this mother who's mourning the loss of her son. And he picks her out of the crowd and says to her, don't cry. Isn't that an incredible scene isn't that an incredible story of, of the compassion and the love Jesus has not only for you and me but we see it just expressed and Jesus I mean my mind just sometimes struggles to wrap around Jesus was here to save the world John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life for God not send Christ into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him saving the whole world and yet he finds one mother who is mourning the loss of her son who is a widow and he says to her don't cry that just puts me in mind of how personal jesus is to us he loves us he sees our need and and as only god can do he's big enough to care for the whole world and yet he's intimate enough to care for the needs of one person of one mother of one son of one who has lost one what a beautiful story. And I don't know what you're going through today. And I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know the fears and the worries in your mind. I don't know if you're concerned about your finances. I don't know if you're concerned about getting your stimulus check put into your, to your bank account. Uh, they're going to take it back anyway, sooner or later, anyhow. So, so if you don't get it, it's not that big a deal. But, but whatever you're facing, Jesus knows. God knows. The Holy Spirit and, and the Father, Son, and the Spirit are working in unison together to speak into your life at this moment. Don't cry, don't fear. Jesus, I love the story of Easter when we taught every time he'd come to his disciples, the first words out of his mouth were, do not fear, peace be with you. Peace, don't fear, be at peace. And Jesus comes to his mother and he says, don't cry. And so then it says he went up and touched the bier and where they were carrying him on and the mat and you would die and you'd be buried on the same day. You couldn't leave a body inside of the, of the city limits and you had, they were unclean. You had to carry them out and bury them right away. And it says the bearer stood still when he touched the bearer and he said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. 
and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. And this news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Uh, isn't that an awesome story? Isn't that incredible? Isn't that a beautiful story? Um, morning, Don. Morning, Candy. How are you doing? Say hi to, to everybody in the house. Um, but I love this, the, the next thing where he says, God, the people, when they saw this, they said, God has come to help his people. So the first thing I wanted us to see through that is about Jesus has compassion. Um, and you know, Jesus connects to us not just through the good times. Not, you know, sometimes I think that we, we miss how intimately Jesus is aware of suffering and of our suffering. And sometimes we've spent a lot of time trying to get people into these walls, into this, to these buildings and into these, to these altars that are here. But Jesus meets us right where we're at. And most people, when they start thinking about God, when they start thinking about Jesus, when they start thinking about heaven and hell, it's usually in the midst of our suffering. And I think one of the reasons there's been, uh, you know, an incredible amount of, of, I've been enjoying the fact I'm watching a lot of different people that I know or different churches and, and I've been able to see some of their live feeds and, and connect to them. Um, and uh, so I've been just connecting in different ways with them. And, and uh, I kind of love the fact that, it, that I find that we're all kind of realizing maybe in a new way that we really are in the same boat. We really do. Um, share the share the same kind of life together and uh, and all those things are going on is um, I know candy there's watching Corrigan Corrigan's a senior this year and here Corrigan and, and all the other kids I mentioned earlier are struggling with here this is supposed to be their senior year and they're missing out on so much of what that senior year what that graduation is supposed to be about and we're hoping that that'll change and we can get some of that back but 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 no senior in high school this year is alone. No senior in college is alone. Everyone else is going through the same thing. And I think we sometimes forget that Jesus understands that in a way that you can't even begin to think or imagine. He's, he relates to us and his connection to us isn't through the good times, right? I mean, um, sometimes when, when life is really good, you sort of forget to include Jesus, <laughs> you know? You kind of forget to include Jesus when when you're getting married or, or maybe at the birth of a child. I mean, you don't ignore him, you don't shun him, but, but you don't necessarily kind of go to him and bring those things into him. But it's in the time of suffering that you begin saying, hey Jesus, where are you at? Hey Jesus. And one of the things that we've, we might forget in Hebrews chapter 4, 15, verses 15, 16 says this, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. And I love that. It says, we have a high priest who has been tempted. He's gone through it. He's been there. He's experienced the emotion of it. He's, he's experienced the loss of it. You know, when Jesus went up to the, to the tomb of Lazarus, it says he, he looked at that tomb. He knew he was going to call him back to life. He knew he was going to call him out. And yet Jesus, so connected with the sorrow of, of Martha and Mary and all the friends, that, that says that he wept, that he cried. And in Hebrews tells us that we don't have a high priest who doesn't uh, associate with us. He's been tempted in every way. And it says, so therefore, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hey, Dustin and Kaylee. Hey, Don and hey, uh, hey, Marianne. Um, and so, so this is incredible to me that God's grace is there to help us in our time of need. Wow. Approach God's throne. Approach God's grace. Approach him with confidence because he's been there. He's done that. He's experienced. He's gone through it. He's gone through what you and I have. He's, he's gone through every emotion that you've experienced so far in this quarantine and this shutdown and this separate. Jesus experienced that and more. Jesus on the cross, when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You, you talk about experiencing separation anxiety. You talk about experiencing loss. God and the Father and the Spirit and the Son are one, and yet in that moment, God must separate himself from Jesus so that he might bear the sins of the world. Jesus knows how you feel. He, he's experienced every emotion, every thought, 
every temptation, every trial that you could think or imagine, not only of your life, but of every person who is walking the face of the earth. And the reality is, and sometimes we forget this, we all go through the same things. Much of what we experience as husbands and wives, and much of what we experience as sons and daughters, and mothers and fathers, and, and the heartaches, and the hardships, and, and the loss, and the gain, and the separation, and, and the cares, and the worries, and the woes, we're all, we forget how not unique we are. The human experience is pretty common among all people. And that should be something that, that doesn't depress us, it should encourage us. Because even Jesus Christ, even the Son of God, even our, our brother, the first born among many brethren, even the Father, the only begotten Son of the Father, has experienced what you and I go through. And it's in that suffering that he connects to us. It's in that suffering that he speaks into our lives and says, I'm here, I've got this, I've got you, I'm with you. And that's a beautiful thing to me. Hi, Bella. Um, you know, Bella, this, this reminds me of Bella's story. Uh, Bella and her husband were working to, to have children, and, and Bella is a, you know, she's just an incredible person. And many of you may not know Bella, and, and uh, you know, I, I love her and Liza and their family. And, and uh, Bella was, was struggling with this idea of having a child. And in the, in the midst of this suffering, in the midst of their heartache and their, and their, and their concern about, not being able to conceive their own child and Bella came and shared with us on a Wednesday night about this process and trying to adopt and trying to work through those things and that's just a daunting task and just in a way that only God can in a moment's notice God just turned all that around and gave them a child and, and she's a beautiful child and she's a beautiful gift and God knew the heartache of a, of, of, a, of a woman who longed to be a mother and has made her a mother and a father and given this child a home and a hope and a place to be loved and a place to belong and a place to find the hope that she needs, not just for this life, but for the life that's yet to come. Just an incredible, again, story after story after story of how God meets us in our time of need. He meets us in our suffering. And when Jesus sees our hurt and our loss, even though he can already see the end, even though he can already see his answer to it, his heart goes out to us and his compassion rains down on us and he meets us in the midst of our grief and our sorrow and our despair and our depression. And he says, peace, peace, I've got this. Hope, joy, love, belonging. I'm on the journey with you. You're not alone. And not only are you not alone, not only am I with you, I've got thousands and tens of thousands and millions and hundreds of millions and billions of brothers and sisters who've gone before you, who are with you now, who are coming behind, and we are in this together. That gives me some incredible hope. And the second thing I want to see on that passage is God's help. They were filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us, and they said, God has come to help his people. Woo! Man, we are never without God's help, even when we don't know it, even when we don't realize it. We are never without help, God's help, even though we often fail to recognize it. The same crowds that, that praised Jesus in this day and, and were, were, were shouting, a prophet has come, and, and shouting, how here is the God. God has sent someone. God has come to help his people. These were the same people, some of the same people who said, crucify him. Some of the same people that, that shouted, hurled, and insulted at him and, and mocked him just, just, just weeks later, just a short time later. And these were the same people that rejected him. And they were the ones who wanted, who stood and cheered as he was crucified. Though they could, they, though they could not see it, Jesus, God was delivering them right in the midst. God was helping them the most when they were rejecting him, utterly rejecting him the most. Even when Jesus was on the cross and even when Jesus was crying out to his father, yeah, crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even in those moments where they thought, oh yeah, even God has rejected this. No, that was the time that God was helping them the most. That's the time that God was delivering them and they couldn't see it. They couldn't even see it. And we may... Um, we may not see it, but God is delivering us. Even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of a layoff, even in the midst of concerns about 
what the reopening is going to be like, even in the midst of those who, who we've lost, even in the midst of those who are sick, even in the midst of this time where there's this all this separation, even in the midst of this, I assure you, God is delivering us, not, not for lack of our difficulties, not for lack of suffering, but right in the midst of it, God's hand of deliverance is active and moving and redeeming us even now. What does that look like? I don't know. Often we don't see it. And sometimes we might need to, to look back to recognize that God was even there. And sometimes we think, we feel like Jesus, God, why have you forsaken me? But really in the midst of it, we know that God is delivering us. Do we believe that? Do you, do you trust him? As you move forward and you can't see what he's doing, do you still know that he's delivering you, that his hand is working? What will his deliverance look like to us when, when this quarantine has begun to be lifted and when we can start to, to gather again? What will his hand deliverance look like to us then? <coughs> what will it look like when we can pull our cars in the parking lot and, and maybe worship from there? What will it look like when we can begin to get out of our cars and, and go into the, to the remodeled the space in the remodeled living room upstairs and when we can back again to to worship in person we can begin to have um we can begin to have prayer and, and we can begin to pray together and we can we can begin what will it look like what will his hand of deliverance look like to us and and i wonder about that because i i ask myself what will we really appreciate will we learn through this process will we gain a new appreciation for gathering together Will we gain a new appreciation for slowing the pace down a little bit? Maybe not, maybe not engaging in quite as many activities. Maybe telling our kids to, to pick one sport. And maybe not trying to get to every new restaurant. And maybe not trying to, to engage in every new activity. And maybe not, not focus so much on things that take our time. And maybe will we begin to truly appreciate when when people take our time, when conversation is what fills the voids in our lives, when congregating, not as a church, but as the body of Christ, will we take more time to, to be available in each other's homes and maybe in our backyards and maybe around a fire and, and slow the pace of life down enough to truly appreciate what it means to be connected as the people of God? Or will we begin to drift again into this complacency and drift again into this to this god of convenience where where we uh, we begin to to think to ourselves i don't have time for this or i don't have time for that or it's the only day i got to sleep in or it's the only time i can go to the store or it's the only time i have for this or it's the the only time that i have have for that uh, what will our life begin to look like is as we find that opportunity, will we drift back into a life, into a, 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 a will we drift back into a, a faith that's only a faith of convenience? I don't know. Will we gather our children together? Will we bring them into a place? You know, I, I hate to use the words like church because we just we've so narrowly we've we've so misdefined that I believe into this idea that that church is only this place, this building where you gather, where there's programs and there's, there's groups and programs. Brothers and sisters, church, it's a family. It's, it's connection between one another. And sometimes I just, I fear that we're, there's a part of me that's grateful for this pause button I don't want to be the place that has the best programs for your kids or for your teenagers. I want to be the people where your kids and your teenagers and, and, and moms and dads and struggling marriages and young adults come and they don't find a better program. They don't find a better club. That they find a family. That they find somebody who will come beside them, who will love them right where they are, for who they are, but love them too much to leave them there, that we will be a connected body of Christ, brothers and sisters that carry each other's burdens, 
that will drop everything to come in a moment of need, that won't look for ways to give away food, but will look for ways to invite each other in our homes to share a meal and, and to live not only on bread, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what I want us to, that's what I long for, that's what I, that's what I see and understand as being the people of God is about. This building is just a convenient place to get more of us together at one time, but it isn't to have better programs. It isn't to have better facilities. It isn't to have better preachers and, and better bands and better light shows and better. Those things are fine, but folks, if we don't have each other and if we don't have the body and if we don't connect to each other, if we're not engaged in each other's lives, we're just another social outing. That's not what I long for. It's not what I long for in our lives. And I don't think that's what Jesus died on the cross to provide for us. I think his heart went out to us just like that mother. I think his heart goes out to us today and he speaks love and he speaks compassion and he speaks to us and he says, I feel what you're going through. I understand your anguish and your journey and your fear and your uncertainty. I understand, I understand where you're at in life and I'm here with you. And I'm guiding and I'm walking alongside you. That's what I hope that you understand about what it means to be a family. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Hi Crystal. Hi, Alan. Oh. Wow. All it took, folks, think about this. All that it took to end the churches, the body of Christ, millenniums, thousands of years of the practice of gathering together, all that took to shut that completely down. I mean, the enemy, Satan has been trying to, to create a division and, and backbiting and fighting among us, but all that it took, you know, Stalin, I believe it was, that, that said, God is dead. And he couldn't stop the church from gathering all that it took this time, all that it took to end millenniums of practice was the threat of illness, the threat of physical death. And all that suddenly went away. I saw in the news uh, yesterday, I believe they said it was in Colorado that the, you know, their mayor of the city, this, I don't even know where it was at in Colorado, the governor that was, was, was having police officers issue church members who had gathered in their cars in the parking lot, issuing them fines of $1,000 for breaking the non-gathering ordinance. Wow. Folks, our fear of death, physical death, it's a powerful thing. But it should never be as powerful in our lives as our hope for life. Our hope for life that transcends these physical bodies that are all going away someday. Our hope for life, true life, our hope and our faith should always be more powerful than our fear of losing our physical lives. What will it take for the bride of Christ to overcome these fears and adjust to perhaps a new form of gathering, a new form of functioning? I don't know, but Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 10. He says, powerful. He says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Don't fear, don't dread, don't be consumed by what may happen to these bodies. Your heavenly Father knows your needs and meets them even when you don't know he's meeting them. Children of God, brothers and sisters of Christ, <laughs> the bride of Christ is bigger, stronger, and more powerful than any virus. Yes, it's real, yes, it's serious, Yes, you need to consider those things. But maybe if we begin to fear for those, fear for those who are the real walking dead, 
and we begin to find a new passion for gathering around their lives and speaking life into them. Maybe the body of Christ will be more the body of Christ than it's ever been before. I don't look at this crisis as the end of church as we know it. I look at this crisis as an opportunity to get back to being the church that we are called to be. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. That's an opportunity that lies before us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us begin to rejoice. Let us begin to be glad. Let us say that even though we are dealing with all these external factors, <coughs> it can't change the internal or the eternal guy who is in control. I was talking with my buddy Ben, Ben Osterman. I don't know if you're out there this morning or not, Ben. <coughs> but we were swapping stories and comments and, and Ben gave me this scripture this morning and I told him, I said, I'm going to use that man, I'm going to use that this morning I, I said, you got a good word for the Lord this morning from the Lord, and he gave me Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 and 2 and it says this, but now this is what the Lord says, he who created you Jacob, he who formed you Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name you are mine, and when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I will be with you in the pandemic. I will be with you in the unemployment. I will be with you when you're trying to figure out your marriage. I will be with you when you're trying to figure out your kids. I will be with you when you're trying to figure out yourself. The Lord, the God who created you, who breathed into you, the breath of life says, I will be with you. Do not fear. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. Man, Ben, that's, that's good words, buddy. That's good words, brother. And then I was also talking this morning. I tell you, man, I've been just talking to everybody today. I was talking with my buddy Ryan. I love Ryan. I love Ryan and I love his family. And Ryan, Renee, and the kids, awesome family. Awesome family. Be praying for them as well. He sent me a poem, and I wanted to end my time with you this morning with this poem because it, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like Dr. Seuss. And it's taken from, and some of you probably already read it, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's like the, uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas. And I want to close with this poem. It says this. This is from uh, Christy Bother. "'Twas late in 19 when the virus began, bringing chaos and fear to all people, each land. People were sick, hospitals full, doctors overwhelmed, no one in school. As winter gave way to the promise of spring, the virus raged on, touching peasant and king. People hid in their homes from the enemy unseen. They YouTubed and Zoomed, social distanced and cleaned. April approached and churches were closed. There won't be an Easter, the world supposed. There won't be church services and egg hunts are out. No reason for new dresses when we can't go about. Holy Week started as bleak as the rest. The world was focused on mask and on test. Easter can't happen this year, it proclaimed. Online and at home, it just won't be the same. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the days came and they went. The virus pressed on. It just would not relent. The world woke Sunday and nothing had changed. The virus still menaced, the people estranged. Poo poo to the saints, the world was grumbling. They're finding out now that no Easter is coming. They're just waking up, we know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two and then all the saints will cry, boo hoo. Boo hoo. That noise said the world will be something to hear. So it paused in the world, put a hand to its ear. And it did hear a sound coming through all the skies. It started down low, then it started to rise. 
But the sound wasn't depressed. Why, this sound was triumphant. It couldn't be so, but it grew with abundance. The world stared around, popping its eyes. Then it shook. What it saw was a shocking surprise. Every saint in every nation, the tall and the small, was celebrating Jesus in spite of it all. It hadn't stopped Easter from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the world with its life quite stuck in quarantine stood puzzling and puzzling. Just how can it be? It came without bonnets. It came without bunnies. It came without egg hunts, cantatas, or money. Then the world thought of something it hadn't before. Maybe. Maybe Easter, it thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Easter, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, the story's not done. What, what happened then? The story's not done. What will you do? Will you share with that one or two or more people needing hope in this night? Will you share the source of your life in this fight, the churches are empty, but so is the tomb, and Jesus is victor over death, doom, and gloom. So this year at Easter, let this be our prayer, as the virus, virus still rages all around everywhere. May the world see hope when it looks at God's people. May the world see the church is not a building or a steeple. May the world find faith in Jesus' death and resurrection. May the world find joy in a time of dejection. May 2020 be known as the year of survival. But not only that, may it be the start of revival. I don't know who Christy is, but God gave her an inspired ability to write that poem. And I wanted to close that with you on this, not Easter's over Sunday, it's still Easter. And next Sunday is Easter, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that. Folks, our hope has never been in preserving these physical lives. Our hope has always been that our life is secure, our spirit our future, our families, our faith, our hope is in the life that is eternal. Don't dread the one who can take the body. Don't dread a virus that can make you sick. Find hope. Find faith. Put your trust in the God who's greater than it all and who in whose hands you can trust this life and you can trust the life that's yet to come. So good to be with all of you here today. Um, hi, Bonnie, uh, Scott, everybody else who's out there. Sorry I went long, I know. 52 minutes in, man! You guys are troopers. If you stayed with me the whole time, I don't know, the average on Facebook that watches videos at uh, Facebook Analytics says it's about 10, 10 to 15 seconds. So uh, I hope that, uh, that this was useful to you and I hope this is hopeful to you. And, and uh, I love you, I pray for you, pray for us. Let's pray for one another. Let's make this the year of revival. Let's not just try to hurry up and get back into a remodeled sanctuary, a space of gathering, the living room. Let's start revival right where you're at, right where, right with who you're with. Today is a day where you can spread the good news of the gospel of peace. Let's do it. Father, thank you for your love and for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for this time of gathering together, maybe not in the flesh, but in the spirit and in the hope that unites us, the hope of one God and one faith and one baptism, the hope that the tomb is empty, and you are seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, praying for us right now, speaking our name and our, and our needs. May we do the same for each other. May we gather in homes and, 
and in our cars and our places of work or schools, wherever the future finds us, may we always be intimately aware that we are connected through one another because we are one with you and you are one with us. And may it draw us deeper into the love that you have for us and the love that you've called us to for one another. And may we not give up hope. May we not give up meeting together. May we, even if it's through digital means or, or phone calls or text or even a handwritten letter, Lord, may we just tr be driven to love as you've loved us, to forgive as you've forgiven us, and to make that love known in every moment, in every day, in the very mundane, ordinary lives that we live. May the extraordinary life of your kingdom shine through. May it flow in and through us and spill over into every life that you bring us into contact with. We love you so much. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor this day. We give you the thanks. We give you the praise. We give you, Lord Jesus, our lives. Here am I. Send me. Use me. Break this life. Spill it out for the sake of feeding those who need to hear to feast on the bread of life. We love you and we give you the praise and we pray as you taught us. Would you join with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I um, hope that, uh, that your life is good for you right now and that you're enjoying God's very best right now wherever you're at. The sun's shining. It's a beautiful day. Go take a walk. Take the dogs out. Drive around, do some drive-bys, but whatever you do, be blessed, be at peace, and keep hoping in the only hope that we truly have. Love you. God bless you. Love you so much. See you soon.